What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Brianna and if you are new here then don't forget to subscribe and as always if you'd like to follow me on all my social media then that is right here down below. So first off, the first thing I want to talk about is I want to thank you guys for all of the support and love on my last video. You guys were super supportive. I was a little bit worried. I wasn't sure exactly how everybody was going to react to it, but you guys acted better than I could have <laughs> ever expected, I guess. So thank you guys all for the love and the support. And today's video is a really fun one and it's different. So I DIY'd my own beer pong table. Anybody that has known me for the last couple of years, I've been super crafty, super artsy. I've designed my own canvases. I used to, I painted a cooler for my cousin once. I have done graduation hats. I did both of my own graduation hats. And this has been my biggest project to date. And I kind of did it on a whim. I saw that people were doing it on TikTok, DIYing their own beer pong table and I was like, I could do that. I want to do it. So I kind of just bought a table off Walmart and started DIYing it. And I filmed the entire process for you guys. I wish I had gotten a couple more clips, but it is what it is. <laughs> so if you guys want to see me DIY my own beer pong table, I take you through all the steps with all my voiceovers, of course, and I walk you through the whole process. And if you guys want to see kind of how I DIY my own beer pong table, then Keep watching. She's beauty and she's grace. She's Miss United States. Okay, so the first thing I had to do was prepare the table. I did a lot of research on this beforehand and everyone pretty much said the best thing to do was to sand the table before painting. So I went to Michael's and I got a bunch of different sandpapers. I bought like a variety pack and I believe up here I'm using 150 grit, whatever the finest grit in the pack was. And I'm just sanding the table because the table kind of already comes with like a glossy sort of finish. So I'm just sanding it down, kind of roughing it up a bit and hope that the paint sticks better to a sanded down surface. The next step in my process was priming the table. I bought a spray paint can of primer and paint actually. It was a mix of both in one can which was really cool. I bought it in the color white and I wanted to just prime my table before doing any other painting and get it ready for all the taping I was about to do. The next step was to bring it home and we had to drive it home in the weirdest way. I sat in the back, I had to keep the table up. It was insanity. <laughs> but I went home and I immediately started taping up my table. I used painter's tape as to not mess up the primer and the paint that I had just done. Um, and I just kind of taped it how I wanted. I didn't follow any direction. I just did whatever looked good. And you can see that I have these like three triangles on the opposite end that like looks really similar. Those three triangles. I ended up actually changing that. Um, but I actually ended up really loving how the shapes came out in the end. finally day one of painting it was actually the same day as all the other clips <laughs> um, but I just took this pink paint and I used this small triangle I thought it would be pretty easy because it was relatively small and this roller I bought at Michaels it was kind of cool the first day but ended up not being the best and you'll see later how I end up using a paintbrush and I wanted to write cheers in gold on this one and I kind of cut off the C and the S of cheers and it actually ended up being really really cool and pretty Day two, this is the only clip I got, I'm sorry, but this is still one of my favorite triangles. Day three, I don't know why I took this same clip over and over and over again, <laughs> but this is probably hands down my favorite triangle on the table, if not my second favorite. On day four, I finally decided I would show you my tracing process. <laughs> so basically what I was doing was shading the back of all of the papers and then just tracing all the lines on the front with a pencil. Day five, I've been drinking watermelon. <laughs> I hate that I didn't get any more clips for the first couple of days, but as the table started to come to life, I started getting more clips and I started getting really excited.
Day six, I did a lot of background painting because I had realized I only had a couple more days and I still had seven triangles that were not painted at all. No backgrounds, no designs, nothing. So I really started trying to haul my butt and get moving and do all of the backgrounds. So day six, I spent most of my day painting backgrounds so that I could at least say that all the backgrounds were done and all I had to do were the designs. Also, this brush was a massive headache. It kept leaving hairs all over the paint. It was so annoying. A more background painting. I wasn't joking when I said I spent most of day six painting backgrounds. <laughs> Also, a majority of the background colors I actually made myself. So for example, this yellow, I actually mixed my own colors and made this background color myself. So this is a time lapse that I took of, once again, painting more backgrounds. <laughs> and I also decided that I wanted to touch up the pink flower that I had in the five o'clock somewhere triangle just because it was a super bright color, but the color itself was like kind of watery, so you had to kind of go over it multiple times so it would be bright, no peak, and that's just what I was doing here. Okay, so now I can explain the tracing process a little bit more. So basically what I was doing was, you can see this piece of paper that I printed out that has stars on it. I found that on Pinterest, printed it out, just did black and white because I wasn't really needing the color for anything. And what I would do is take a pencil and shade the back of the paper. And you'll see more examples of this as we get farther into the video. But I would shade the back of the paper. So for this, I really only needed the stars. So instead of wasting my pencil, I shaded the back of all of the stars. Then I would flip the paper over and then I would take this mechanical pencil and trace each star. So I don't think I used all of them because some of them were like cut off, but I would literally just go around each star and trace the lines and then it would come out in the perfect shape on my table. And then all I had to do was paint them and fill them in. And it was super easy and it made my lines super crisp and super clean. This was just a quick little insta story clip and fun fact my friends had no idea what the table was going to look like and so it was a sneak peek for everyone. I thought these stars came out so cute and it was super easy to do. Ah, here's that clip, so now you can finally see what I'm doing. I'm just shading in the back, coloring in the back. I only shade over the actual shapes I need, so I don't have to shade the entire back of the paper. And then what I'm doing here, this was a picture of a bunch of alcohol bottles or liquor bottles, and so I had shaded the back of this, laid it down, and then traced over all of the lines that outlined all of the bottles.
and now it's kind of hard to see but there are outlines of all of the liquor bottles and now all I have to do is fill them in with paint. And here are the finished liquor bottles and I think this came out really cool and was relatively simple to do. Nothing to see here, just more background painting. Day seven. I think this might be my favorite triangle. The black and the rose gold. Mm, they just look so good together. And just some more tracing to round out day seven. All of my friends were like, oh my god, how did you get Spongebob to look so accurate and so clean and so crisp? This is how. All I did was use the tracing method and honestly, I will never do anything by freehand again. I used to do freehand and not tracing and this has method has changed my life. <laughs> also, peep that tan line on my wrist, lol. Day eight, the last day before I finally revealed my table to my friends, I had done a bunch of finishing touches. So I had added the flowers on SpongeBob's triangle, the thunderbolts on the Saturdays are for girls, the strawberries on the Long Island triangle, a um, couple martini glasses on the happy hour, and some champagne glasses on the other side for cheers to poor decisions. And those things didn't take me that long, but just wanted to fill up the spaces. I didn't want to have any like empty spaces in the triangles. Aside from the blue tape, this was pretty much the finished look. So this was not my idea, but my friend had sent me a TikTok where somebody did this. They basically put their Spotify code on their table, and so I did the same thing, and it brings you right to my playlist. So if you screenshot this and do it, comment below. So one of the last few steps was to just dust the table off. So I just took like a little brush, dusted it off to make sure there was no like remnants on the table, and finally take the blue tape off to kind of see what I had. And this was so satisfying, you have no idea. And then after I took the tape off, I had a lot of kind of pink paint or yellow paint seeping through where the tape was and or um, paint that came off with the tape. So I just went around with the white paint all the way around the table, as you can see, and touched everything up, cleaned all my lines up. And this was really easy. It didn't take me that long, but definitely paid off in the long run because it made all the lines super neat and clean. And finally, the last step, I just took this Mod Podge sort of sealer finisher that I bought at Michael's. It was just um, spray paint. And I just went all the way around the table and made sure that the top was extra sealed. And I also sprayed it along the sides. And this was to make sure that the table was waterproof and was sealed so the paint wouldn't chip off. Ta-da! And here are all of the clips of my finished project came out so good i'm so happy with it i love it so much
So these are just some clips that I had finally posted on my Instagram story after I had finally revealed my table to my friends. They loved it. I did film their reaction, so you'll see it at the end of this video. And just a quick little disclaimer, Long Island, things have started lightening up. We're in phase three. We're allowed to have gatherings of less than 50 people, and this was just a gathering of less than 10 people. So I wanted to make sure that I put that out there, that everybody has been completely safe we didn't share drinks or anything like that we wore masks when we needed to and everybody that i was with i felt safe and trusted with and i am still wearing a mask anytime i go out in public I did it all by hand. Spongebob is fucking professional. You're in Thank my you. video. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's some shit. Wow. That's, 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 that's Thank you. Thank you. I'm so proud of it. I'm ready to play on it. It's not going to work. That is the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I loved making this beer pong table. It was super fun. Something a little bit different. I love getting kind of DIY-ish and crafty and artsy and it's a lot of fun. I just love it. If you guys do your own beer pong table, please send me pictures or tag me in pictures on Instagram or TikTok or whatever or follow me on TikTok because I did sort of a condensed version on there of DIYing my own beer pong table. And if you guys decide to sort of recreate or even just do your own thing with the beer pong table, let me know. I would love to see your guys' designs. I think that's all I've got for you guys. So I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. If you want to follow me on all my social media it's in the description box below and uh i'll see you guys next week for another video happy fourth of july bye